Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I am proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. So, this video is just, um, it's just like to make a little point, right? It's not, I'm not trying to, I don't have the best connections and stuff, but there's enough. There's just enough connections to make a point of something I want to make. And it's one of these things that I think it's good enough to document into a video. It's actually because, you know, I'm not making many videos right now, right? So it's got to be something that's like, there's something that's got to catch where I'm like, you know, something about that's interesting, right? And it's like, let me document that, right? Because actually, I tried to look for more information and I couldn't find the better stuff. But it was like, well, okay, what I have is enough and stuff, right? It's enough to just put the thought out there and get it started. And so where this starts is... This is a podcast over in like through the sports card community stuff is how I know these guys. This is a, a podcast to be called Cousins Collectibles Podcast, right? It's Cousin Oz and Cousin Tony, right? And then so Cousin Oz, he's the people's mailman, right? So he's a big Michael Jackson fan, right? And so I've spoke, I tried to speak with him and stuff. I've spoken with him a little bit. Right, I influenced him to purchase some Michael Jackson collectible stuff, some Michael Jackson collectible cards. I told him about some stuff that was out there because he was buying stuff and then people told me about him and stuff. So I went over, but then I tried to have a conversation with him about like my Michael Jackson story and it's just like dead air, right? Silence and shit, right? It's weird, right? These people that are obviously are Michael Jackson fans. So one of the things is like they run a podcast and stuff, which... I mean, it's all right and stuff, but it stuff bores me for the most part. But the guy does talk about Michael Jackson a lot on his show, and he buys Michael Jackson items. So what I'll do is I'll just go over to his podcast, and I'll just, like, scan through. I'll just put it. I'll go through, and, you know, on the bottom, you can, uh, like, where it has, like, the play line. You just kind of go through there, and it and it, it's, like, fast, super fast forward, right? And I just kind of look for Michael Jackson memorabilia stuff, that if he's showing any stuff, then I'll go and listen to that part, right? I'll, or I'll just skip through the video really fast or whatever, just to see if they're talking about any Michael Jackson things. Because he actually does frequently, at least since, since I've been paying attention to him for the last couple months, he seems to always have some Michael Jackson item coming in that he has purchased and stuff, right? So whatever. So on this video, that's what happened. So I, I was just skipping through this video, and then I seen he had a Michael Jackson picture, so I went and stopped on it and played it, and it's like, okay, let me see what that is and stuff, right? So that's what that's where this video starts. This That's where this comes is because he says something, and then I'm like, he shows a Michael Jackson picture, and he says something, and then it's like, huh, okay, then I'll explain to you. Let me, let me just play this for you. Readily available. <clears throat> and it's just MJ and it's just to me this is him like innocent you know what I mean before everything that happened him and his Sherlock Holmes hat okay it's him and his Sherlock Holmes hat okay because when he says this is before he's innocent because even later he says before he's really famous it's like now nah. and he says he's innocent but he doesn't know like my story it's like no my story says that the thing that happened to MJ happened when he's like 10 11 years old right when he gets to Motown and they move to LA and they're staying with Diana Ross and like I say in this in the song Billie Jean where it says she came and stood right by me um, within the smell of sweet perfume, this happens much too soon. She calls me to her room because Michael's only 10, 11 years old. That's why it happens too soon. She came and stood right by me because it's Diana Ross. It's in her house. She's in charge. That's the, that's, that's in the song Billie Jean because Diana Ross is Billie Jean. That's what I'm saying. And then she calls me to her room. See, that's not like, it's like, it's not like this sultry, sexy, groupy, right? Okay. And see, that's what I say with that one line. When it says she calls me to her room, you get the allure that this is like some really sexy, sultry, groupy, right? She calls me to her room. You know, he's like, this happened much too soon. And everything what he says in that line. But it's like, and, but when I dissect it, like Sherlock Holmes, and see, this is the kind of thing. And this is why when he said Sherlock Holmes, it's like, okay, well, that's what I'm doing with my investigation. I'm investigating Michael Jackson's real life his story and stuff but i'm looking at it like like a sherlock holmes type of detective and that's why when he pointed out this picture and he said michael's there in his sherlock holmes hat i'm like huh 
Sherlock Holmes because I know the story. I understand the basic concept of what the Sherlock Holmes character represents and stuff, right? So when he said Sherlock Holmes, I'm like, huh, Sherlock Holmes. And then I'm like, oh, look at Michael's interested in Sherlock Holmes. And so that's where like the video starts, right? And so that's what I'm saying with the Billy Jean when, when you Sherlock Holmes it and you look at the words and stuff and it's like, then you look at the words and it says she came and stood right by me. And it's like, okay, does a groupie really have the power just to come and stand right by Michael? But when you look at it from the perspective of my thing, and it's Diana Ross, and Michael's only like 10, 11 years old, and he's actually living in her house, she came and stood right by me. Then the smell of sweet perfume, because Diana Ross, she even has a perfume out that she put out recently called Diamond Diana. But I, and I've shown videos, I've made videos about this, that Diana Ross really has a smell that she has worse perfume. That's the thing that she does. She puts it all over. She always makes sure that she smells of perfume. So that's what I'm saying. When she came and stood right by me, it shows the woman has this control to come and stand right by me. Then the smell of sweet perfume, because that's what, that's a very descriptive words to describe of that experience of being a young Michael Jackson and having Diana Ross come. She come and stood right by me. Then the smell of sweet perfume. It's really, really, when you Sherlock Holmes it and you have the understanding of the bigger picture of the story of what happened, it, my story is the one that really explains it. It says, she came and stood right by me, then the smell of sweet perfume. This happens much too soon. So right there, Michael says, this happened. Something happened. He's telling you, this happened much too soon. Something happened. Something happened. And the next line is, she called me to her room. Okay, so Michael told you something happened in that room. And it happens when he said some form of a young age, something actually is happening is what he's talking about with this Billie Jean groupie. But the way that you would picture, if you're picturing it as being a groupie, you're thinking this like really sultry, sexy woman, like she comes to right by me, the smell of sweet perfume. This happens much too soon, she called me to her room. I think that that, if you're looking at it from a Billie Jean groupie kind of thing, I think you're picturing a very sexy, sultry woman, seductive woman, right? But then he says, Billie Jean's not my lover. And he constantly, through the whole song, he's saying, she's not my lover, she's not my lover, right? But he told you something happened in the room with this woman that appears to be really sexy and sultry. And, and he went to the room. She called me to her room. He, go, he says he goes to the room and something happened in the room. But that's what I'm saying. It's like when you look at it from the Billie Jean groupie thing, the next line that says Billie Jean's not my lover, that completely contradicts the understanding of the Billie Jean groupie. It totally contradicts it. It's, it doesn't fit now. Now it doesn't fit. And this is where you got to put your Sherlock Holmes hat on. And see, that's the way, like that word right there just came into my mind. That's a kind of word, a, a saying that you could, a phrase. It's a phrase that you could use when you're, when you're like trying to analyze something and see deeper into the message of the evidence and stuff that you got that most people are not seeing. When you want to see deeper into it, you got to put your Sherlock Holmes hat on. See, that's why I'm making this video with the Sherlock Holmes. There's not a lot to it, but it's that Sherlock Holmes hat. The fact that, and, I, and then I went and looked for that picture of Michael in a Sherlock Holmes hat. I couldn't find the picture. So, I, so this was the only way. So that's what I'm saying. I didn't have a lot of connections because I couldn't find, I looked for a video. Like I, I looked in YouTube with Michael Jackson and Sherlock Holmes. I searched Michael Jackson and Sherlock Holmes. And then I searched the images, Michael Jackson and Sherlock Holmes, like I said. And then I'll show you one other thing that did come up. But besides this other one little thing that came up, I couldn't find anything. That's where I was saying kind of stumped with this, but then the overall uh, totality of just, like I said, by making this video, it made me use that phrase, I put my Sherlock Holmes hat on. And you know, I think that's a phrase in society. I, I think that was an actual phrase that people would say that in that, I, it's like, well, how'd you figure it out? I say, I put my Sherlock Holmes hat on. I think that's a fucking phrase that actually is used in society. Like I said, I don't think it would be in the movie. I don't think that, that would, they would use that movie, but I think that that was a phrase because of the character of Sherlock Holmes in the movies. I think that's a phrase that came about that people would start saying on their own when they were talking about, how'd you figure that out? And he'd say, I put my Sherlock Holmes hat on. So just the fact that there's a picture of Michael Jackson with a Sherlock Holmes hat on, it intrigued me. Right, and that's what I'm making. This, that's why I'm making this video. So, and then when when I first looked at the hat, I didn't spot it as being a Sherlock Holmes hat. So, if he wouldn't have said that word Sherlock Holmes, I wouldn't have caught it. 
See, this is how things work, too. It's like, I'm not the all-great, all-knowing Oz and shit, right? That's funny because his name's Cousin Oz and shit, right? So I'm, 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 I'm making a reference to the... Uh, the uh, Wizard of Oz movie and shit, right? The, the great all know it Oz and shit. But I'm not like the great all know it Oz. It's shit that I know everything. And so so sometimes these other people have to say a little thing. Then I catch it. Oh, yeah, that is a Sherlock Holmes hat, right? So let me show you a couple things. So I did check on the, to show you. This is when I punched in a Sherlock Holmes hat, okay? So this is if you go to like Google Images and you punch in Sherlock Holmes hat, you see the style of it, it's that hat, and then it has those two flaps on the side that come up, right? And so that was like, okay. And then so I looked at this hat again, and I'm like, yeah, that is a Sherlock Holmes hat, it is. It, and so when he, when he said that, like I said, I wouldn't have caught that, that it was a Sherlock Holmes hat. I just wouldn't, if I had seen that picture, it wouldn't have instantly resonated. Oh, that's a Sherlock Holmes hat, I wouldn't have caught it. Right. But when he said it, then it like sparked. Oh, that's that's a Sherlock. That means something. There's more to that. It's one of these things that I always say is like when you're looking at things and stuff, there's more to it. There's more there, you know, and actually now that I look at the picture, I, I like I hadn't thought of this before, but there's the uh, Rodan. I know it's Rodan, the sculpture called the thinker. And I think that now that I'm looking at it, it makes me want to pull it up and stuff. Right. But I think that the Michael Jackson's hand play, see, this is what happens when you keep looking. You got to put your Sherlock Holmes hat and look a little bit deeper. I think that Michael's hand position is positioned like the Rodin statue, the thinker. You know, it's like makes me want to pull it up and I, I didn't pull it up and I don't want to go pull it up now because that, that takes about one, it takes a minute. I don't want to do that, you know, but by looking at it, I'm thinking, his hand, it does. That's like, that's what the thinker, his hand is like that, and he's the thinker, right? So that's what Michael, I think that's what Michael's doing in this picture is he's got his Sherlock Holmes hat, and he's got his hand position. Now that I'm seeing it, that, now I'm thinking about it. It's like his hand is like, it's the Rodin. It's Rodin sculpture called the thinker. It's a really famous sculpture, and Michael's into art and stuff like that, and the Rodin thinker is, is, is super, super famous. So... When I, the reason I'm bringing that up is because it's such a famous sculpture that I would assume that Michael, I can, I can assume that Michael Jackson would have been aware of that at this time in his life, right? That's what is, that's why I'm trying to specify how big of a sculpture, the Rodan, the thinker, it's really, really famous. That's like, I, I don't know the names of stuff. I wouldn't know the artist of a sculpture. There's, I know Michelangelo's David and Rodan's the thinker. That's like it. <laughs> Literally, those are like, when you want to talk about sculptures, I probably couldn't name two sculptures where I could name the artist and what the sculpture is called. I, there's only like two of them. I mean, there might be a few other ones, but the two most famous ones I could think is Michelangelo's David, which is like, there's a lot to Michael and Michelangelo. There's a lot to that, which is interesting, but it's Michelangelo's David and Rodin's The Thinker. Those are the two most famous sculptures that I know of where I actually know the artist and I know what the piece is actually called. And I could, I could, if I seen it, I could tell you, that's Michelangelo's David. I know what that is, right? That's Rodin's The Thinker. I know what that is and shit, right? And I'm pretty sure his hand is in a placement like that. That's the way his hand is placed. And that would make sense. It's logical to think that Michael would have his Sherlock Holmes hat on and he's got his hand placement placed in a, in a fashion resembling of Rodin's The Thinker, right? That's what I'm saying, this, this, this picture, there's more to it. You gotta put your Sherlock Holmes hat on stuff, and that's what I'm trying to tell you about the Michael Jackson story is, and why he's doing this, is, is he's showing you that this is the kind of way that he thinks, that this is a thought process of which he has went through in his life and he's understanding of that kind of thought process and that's what i'm saying with the and this is before like this uh, oz here he's saying this photo captures mj before all of like where he where he, where he says before he's famous but he, what he's talking about is before he becomes famous as a solo artist right and uh so that's what I'm telling you is that Michael Jackson placed within his music and stuff secret messages and clues and stuff within his art. And that's what this picture represents is that Michael was very aware of the Sherlock Holmes type of investigation and thinking process and Rodin's The Thinker, this thinking deep thought process. So it shows that he was aware of that kind of process 
Before he made his art and became solo, this photo captures that. It's a very, it is a very impressive picture. There's an important picture and it relates to my story. And this is what I talk about with like in the collectibles community is like there's stuff that if you find, I don't know if you guys just heard there's like thunder and stuff and, and it's like, see, I'm, I'm, it's like, we're still, I'm still a day away from that Hurricane Hillary coming and hitting us way up here and shit, but we're already starting to get like the remnants of it are starting to move in and shit, right? And it's it's like, so that's like the thunder. If you heard the thunder, we're already starting to get the very, very, we're, well, that thing's still so far, it's down way down there in Mexico and shit, but it's starting to already, we're starting to see the effects of it, which is starting to scare me because I've never been through like real hurricanes and shit. Not really, it's kind of a little bit scary, okay? But anyway, so then, so then, uh, like I said, you look at the hat it is a Sherlock Holmes hat like I was showing you and then um, then like the connection there was another connection was that um, so this is a, a interview this is an interview that was done with Michael Jackson sound engineer Bruce Swedeen and uh, the Bruce Swedeen is a uh, you know most Michael Jackson fans would know really know a lot about him but one of the cool things is that I've shown is that Michael Jackson met Bruce Wedeen when he was still just with the Jackson 5 before they signed to Motown. That, uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, it's the guy from the Shy Lights. I'm just, I can't think of his name right now, but it's the guy. He's really important. And I've shown a lot with him because, like, when Joe Jackson, after Michael Jackson died, then Joe Jackson's hanging out with this guy from the Shy Lights that was the singer of the Shy Lights. But the Shy Lights, when Michael was hanging out, when Michael, when they were touring around Chicago and stuff, and the, the one guy that was really bringing them around to the clubs that was doing all this stuff was this guy, Marshall Thompson, Marshall Thompson of the Shy Lights. And so it was Marshall Thompson, and Marshall Thompson once took him into a studio, and Bruce Wedeen was working there in that studio. That was when his early days as a sound engineer. He was working in Chicago. And so, and then Michael said, he told Marshall Thompson, he says, I really dig that sound engineer. Who's that? And he says, that's Bruce Wedeen. And so that's where Michael had met Bruce Wedeen. So Michael Jackson and Bruce Wedeen's relationship goes back um, to the late 60s and shit, right? So they go way, way back, right? So this is an interview of Bruce Wedeen. Um, talking about the recording of Thriller, but more mainly what he's talking about is like we use these amps and we use these microphones. He's talking technical, like this sound engineer. He's really, most of it's this technical stuff. But then there's a thing here in the Thriller that he mentions. I'm just going to read it to you so you can go keep the picture of Thriller on. See like right here, you see there's words, okay? So you see that that's an interview, but I'm just going to keep that picture. I'll just keep that picture of Thriller on so it's a little bit better. I'm just going to read to you a, a little part here, right? So this says... It says, when we, did, when we did Thriller, the song, the opening in particular, Rod Temperton, who wrote the track, had conceived us to have, I'm sorry, I'm having a little hiccup. Okay, had conceived us to have Wolf's Howl in it. At the time, there was a Sherlock Holmes movie, The Hounds of Baskerville that had this huge dog, a Great Dane, in it that did some howling. And, of course, I had that in my mind's ear. Um, then he goes on and talks about he has a Great Dane, and he went to try and get the, his Great Dane to record a sound like that, but he, it didn't work, right? And then he says, and then after that, he says, but you know who, who it is that is doing those howls? That's Michael Jackson. We had to get Michael to do it instead, but he did it so great. There's some library stuff in there, but Michael did those howls. So library, that means just like stock stock footage. So stock sound footage, recordings of howls. So he says there's a little bit of that in there, but there's also some of Michael doing the howls, some of the howls and stuff that are in the song. But the origin and this is kind of like a thing, like I said, there's the Sherlock Holmes thing. So that's the kind of thing where Michael, when the Rod Temperton brings up the name Sherlock Holmes, you could see where Michael was interested, would have been interested in that because the picture I just showed you of him wearing the Sherlock Holmes hat, right? That you can see that Michael would have been interested in the, and it shows, like I said, I couldn't find much connection to the Sherlock Holmes except this one little connection. There was a direct other connection where we know that there was a Sherlock Holmes influence of something in Michael's work, right? So this was like one direct, this was the only one I could find right now and stuff, right? But just, to, but, it, but it was it was an important one and stuff. But just to show you, there is a connection to where Michael, where Sherlock Holmes' names was uh, brought into the conversation and, and they did it. They did what, you know, the connection to that Sherlock Holmes movie, The Hounds of Baskerville and stuff. That's where that originated from, right? So then I just wanted to read to you 
This is the Sherlock Holmes uh, Wikipedia. So see a Sherlock Holmes, and this would be uh, describing of what the Sherlock Holmes character is, right? So let me just read this to you. It says, Sherlock Holmes is a fictional detective created by British author, um, let me go down to the next, uh, is that where, okay, yeah, it is right there. Sometimes when I'm reading it, it's like, okay, is this the part where it has the, <laughs> it has the descriptive part? It's like, okay. So by British author Conan Doyle, referring to himself as consulting detective in the stories, Holmes is known for his proficiency with observation, deduction, forensic science, and logical reasoning that borders on the fantastic, which he employs when investigating cases for a wide variety of clients, including Scotland Yard. Okay, so you see what I'm saying about the Sherlock Holmes character, and it's the way, he has a special way. He has a special way of doing his investigation. Right, there, that's the Sherlock Holmes character. There's a specialness to him, and there's there's a significance into the way of which he looked at things and the way he observed things, and how then he would come up with his own analysis, his logical reasoning. Right, so that's what I'm saying. And when it shows with Michael with that Sherlock Holmes hat on and stuff, that's what I'm saying. Michael would have been very aware of Sherlock Holmes before he started implementing the secret messages into all of his art and his all of his solo work and stuff which that photo captured with him in the Sherlock Holmes hat right and the thinker that's what I'm that's what I'm saying that photo was really important to see have me see him in a Sherlock Holmes hat that was really interesting right and so I just wanted to point that out to you and kind of give you my ideas to show you why I think it's so interesting and what what message does it actually say like I put my Sherlock Holmes hat on after I look at that Michael Jackson photo and I say that my Michael Jackson then would have been aware that if you look at his artwork through the lens of this logical reasoning, if you look at it like through a Sherlock Holmes type of investigation, that you can find other hidden messages that he had left behind in there. And that's what I'm trying to say, that he did that. And that photo shows that he was aware of that kind of procedure and he had planted into his artwork the secret messages, but in order for you to see it, you had to look past what you thought was the story that everybody is taking at face value and the simple ex, the simpleton explanation of the uh, work and stuff. You have to look at it deeper. And if you look deeper, what you find is the truth. And the truth tells you that Michael was an abandoned child and his real parents are Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson. And that's what I'm saying, what I've been doing. And I'm saying it's there because Michael placed it there. Right? Okay, guys. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.